Hi, welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. Oh. I have blatantly been avoiding doing a video on this one for a while. You guys are going to see why in today's video. But the Elite 2.0 Echo is a blaster that I think everybody needs to know about. It needs to know why they shouldn't buy one. <laughs> Although, if some of you have been living under a rock so long that you don't know what this is trying to replace, allow me to break it down for you. This is intended to be the replacement of the Nerf Retaliator, an absolute behemoth of a blaster in terms of just popularity and love. Everybody knows what the Retaliator is, and for good reason. It is the most popular Springer outside of maybe the Maverick or something like that, but the blaster was just done so well in pretty much every single way, it's hard to find any complaints with it. And this blaster was attempting to replace that towering behemoth of a Springer. <sighs> I hate making reviews where all I do is complain, and you're gonna see pretty much nothing but complaints throughout this entire video. But we might as well just start with the design. It's, uh, it's boring. There's really not much. They couldn't even be bothered to put the two little peg things like they do on most Elite 2.0 blasters. Now, instead, they put those on the stock that it comes with for some reason. But the design looks okay. It's basically just a block of empty plastic with grills on the front and then Elite 2.0 on the top for details. No paint on the other side. It's a design. It works. Now, if we actually take a look at the stock and the barrel that it comes with, the design gets a little more interesting. The stock looks pretty cool. It's the same length as the original Retaliator stock and the Delta Trooper stock. It kind of mimics the Delta Trooper stock more, but it has a tack rail on top for some bizarre reason, and it matches perfectly with the shell. Same goes with the barrel. It's got a lot of details and a lot of rails on it, which I honestly dig. I also like the design on the front having these grills on it. It just looks cool, and once again, it perfectly lines up with the design of the blaster. Uh, even then, like, yeah, the design looks kind of mid, even if you look at it like this. I think it looks okay, but it could have just been done so much better. The generic launch Elite 2.0 design really doesn't work as well for the Echo as it did for other blasters like the Turbine, but I'm not going to dwell too long on this. Let's cut to the ergonomics. This grip sucks. It is too big for this type of blaster. This is something that you would see on a rival blaster, and it is being used on a small pump action primary springer thing like the Retaliator. It just feels too big and it feels too angular as well. The front of it has sort of this flat edge to it right there. You can see how flat it is right on the front and it just doesn't merge very well. The turbines work because it's so nice and comfortable and smooth. This one has a weird angle to it and it just feels too big. The priming handle is the exact opposite. It is way too small. They don't give you much surface area on the top to actually grab onto and it's not very low down lengthwise, like on the sides, like the Retaliators and the Delta Troopers was. You don't have very much room to grab onto this, so your hand ends up feeling very cramped when you try and pull this thing back. We will talk about this prime later, trust me. But first, let's just get onto the trigger. The trigger is an annoying plastic spring, but it is pretty snappy when you actually pull it. As for the, uh, the mag door release, oh gosh. Oh no, it's awful! This is probably the least offensive bout of the three magazine-fed release Elite 2.0 blasters, but that doesn't make it good. It is still an annoying plastic spring inside of the trigger guard. At least this one isn't as heavy to pull down as the other two, so you could reasonably push it forward with your knuckle if you were to use this. Some people have had faulty mag releases to where if it's barely flicked, the magazine falls right out. That's not a good thing. That's really annoying. And as for the stock that it comes with, yeah, it is way too short, but that's just been a common theme around the Retaliator since release, even since all the way back with the recon. But how does this thing work? Well, you take a mag, you pull this back, you put the magazine in, which is actually a pretty smooth operation. You can also take it out, and it seems to like mag dropping, which is a pleasant surprise. And you push it forward and you can fire once, or it has slam fire which is actually a welcome addition to the Retaliator because the original Retaliator didn't have slam fire. The Delta Trooper did have slam fire though, so they're not actually adding that new to this blaster. Now, we gotta talk about the Prime. It feels very, very wrong. It feels super gritty. Even though the Prime is incredibly smooth to pull back and push forward, it just feels so rough. 
And the reason for that is because this blaster does not have O-rings. It doesn't have O-rings. It's plastic on plastic. A painful amount of friction with minimal lubricant on those pieces. And it just feels horrible to pull this thing back and put it forward. It feels terrible to use this in any capacity. I hate priming it and I hate firing it. Why couldn't they have even put in O-rings? And I'm not even getting to the worst part yet, because obviously the Elite 2.0 blasters are clipped together, so it's a pain to take apart. But this one adds an extra layer of pain and suffering onto that, which you will have to fight to the death to beat. Let's say, heaven forbid, you want to change out the spring. Do you see the stock attachment point? Do you see any screws holding it in? Nope! It is held in with glue and solvent welds. A piece that goes on this way with no way to pull it off. No screws, no clips, just glue and solvent welds and friction holding it in. This thing is a nightmare to get off. It is impossible to take it off without breaking it. Literally, it is impossible. I am not exaggerating that. I have never seen a case where anyone has successfully got this off without completely destroying this piece in the process because they intentionally went out of their way to make sure you were not going to be able to get this off. Firing demo. Firing demo first. Firing demo first. What is the point of living if all I can do is suffer? Nine shots normal, nine shots slam fire. Oh, it feels so bad. As I said at the start of this video, I hate doing angry reviews like this because it, it makes me lose faith in the Nerf hobby for a little while. I feel like this is going to end up being the norm forever and I forget that this was a painful blunder of 2020. But this blaster is inexcusably insulting to the legacy of every single blaster that came before it. Even the Modulus Recon Mark II, with its annoying magazine compatibility issue, is better than this because you can at least open that blaster. This blaster you can't open without breaking. You physically can't. It is made so incredibly cheap. Look at how easily I can squeeze the plastic shell with minimal effort. I am not even joking, this is an Alpha Strike product and they wanted to replace the Retaliator with this. Not add a new option, replace. This is the Retaliator now. That's what they marketed this as. This is an insult to nerfers everywhere. No matter who you are, or where you stand in the nerf hobby, this is the worst retaliator I have ever seen in my whole life. Genuinely, every single one of these Elite 2.0 release blasters have been the worst versions out of any blaster in the category that they sit in. And this one is no exception. This blaster is absolutely atrocious. There is nothing positive I can say about it. But the good news for you is that you don't have to buy one of these. You can get a Modulus Recon Mark III or the Retaliator right now on Amazon for retail price. And both of them cost the same amount as the Echo. The good news is, though, that I think Hasbro got the point back when stuff like this was coming out. Because it's been a very long time since I have seen them try to replace something great with something this insulting. If you have lost your sanity and all of your brain cells, I will link this thing in the description below. But please do not buy one. Please do not support this blaster. Please get something else so that Hasbro will stop selling it and actually put something better on the market. They listened with the strife, okay? People hated the Phoenix and they gave us the Storm Charge, which is a good blaster. This is a good one. We need them to do the same with the Echo. Stop buying this. Let Hasbro know that this is not what we want and hopefully they will release a better version of it. Even if it's the same shell, I can get past the ergonomic issues just so long as it's made properly. Come on, Hasbro, bring back the Retaliator. That's all I have to say. Thanks for watching. Bye.